And welcome back to Friends in the Corner podcast, a new podcast experience here in the Bluegrass state of Kentucky. And I am your host, Dan Polly, and I want to welcome you to our very first YouTube exclusive YTE uh, for the podcast here. And let me tell you a little bit about the YTE's YouTube exclusive. As uh, it says in the name, the YTE's YouTube exclusives will be uh, podcast episodes that we put specifically on YouTube. And what's going to be different from the YTs from the rest of the cast that we've done is that each month we're going to do something different that's a little bit unique, a little more off the wall than what we've done with our normal podcast. So traditionally we do uh, good and fun interviews for you guys to listen to. Um, but the YTs we're going to experiment a little bit more with, see what you guys like. And if it's something you guys enjoy, um, hopefully we'll bring it on to the main cast so you guys can enjoy it along the way too. Um, so if you guys do have recommendations for YTEs or anything with the podcast, you guys can always uh, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at FITC Podcast and send me some messages that way. Or you can email the show at friendsinthecorner at gmail.com. That's friends in the corner, all together lowercase at gmail.com. And for tonight's YTE, we've got something a little fun in store. Um, I want to say first off, thank you to everyone who's listened to the podcast over this month. And I'm going to show a lot of my appreciation here during the front half of the podcast. But I know we had three fantastic interviews with three completely different gentlemen over this past month. Those being Max Godby from BBN Chalk Talk, Adam Banks from Off the Cuff, and DJ Otis Badass from Primetime Wrestling. Just amazing interviews with three guys that I've just uh, learned to appreciate and admire. And a lot of the influence I've had in how this podcast came to be is because of those guys. So I want to thank them so much. But we had uh, three fantastic interviews. So good that there was content and audio that didn't quite make the final cuts for all three of those interviews. And there was so good stuff in there. Like I said in Otis's interview, we did enough to make two episodes out of. And so guess what we're doing tonight? We're going to air the unaired audio you didn't get to hear in our first couple of episodes of Friends in the Corner podcast, specifically those from the Adam Banks and DJ Otis Badass interviews. Now, at this point, I was hoping to also share if you guys the unaired audio from the Max Godby interview as well. But going back through my archives, it seems that I can't find the audio that I was going to use for this episode of the podcast and this part of the FTE as well. So I'm not quite sure what happened. I want to say that maybe it was a mistake on my hat part. But more than likely, Max probably broke into my computer and deleted that audio because he didn't want he anyone to hear what he had to say on certain subjects in sports. But when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And so as the former producer of BB and Chalk Talk, I have the pleasure of having a large library of audio clips of Max during the early days of the BB and Chalk Talk podcast. So since this week will be their two-year anniversary of the podcast i thought to myself what better way to celebrate than to share with you guys the very first rant that ever happened on bbn chalk talk so we're going to share that you'll also get to hear me and adam debate who really is the original batman as well and you're also going to hear more from DJ Otis Badass, just some of his thoughts on more of the wrestling industry today. We talk about a very special event that's coming up this weekend in wrestling called All In, and he's going to talk specifically about the growth of women's wrestling in the country as well. So all three of those uh, part two interviews, as I'm calling them, are going to be fantastic. We hope you enjoy them. But as we just talk about the podcast here, I just want to say one thing to everybody here, and I just want to say thank you so much to everyone over this month who has listened to the podcast, and I truly mean that. Over this past month since we launched in the start of August, we have had over 200 people listen to our podcast in some capacity, and that is just unbelievable to me. 200 people have listened to my voice. 200 people have listened to the voices of Max, Adam, and Otis. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much to those people who took the time just to listen to this podcast. I know they're long, they're about an hour each, so I appreciate you for taking the time. Um, 
it has really been inspiring for me just to listen to the positive feedback we've gotten from the podcast, the um, recognition we've gotten from the podcast too. So I just want to say thank you all for your help. You guys have truly been the friends in my corner. And we just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for helping us to make this a relevant podcast in the Lexington, Central Kentucky area. And if you guys have enjoyed the content that we've put out this far for Friends in the Corner podcast, you haven't heard anything yet. We've got, already got our interviews recorded for next month for September. And I can tell you this, they are going to be fantastic. They're going to be a lot of fun. And I cannot wait for you to hear what we have in store for Friends in the Corner. So be sure to check those out. And as we talk about Friends in the Corner, I'm also hoping that we can take a moment to be um, all friends in someone's corner here today as we um, just come off the heels of the shooting in Jacksonville that we just learned about this past weekend. So um, for those who are ill-informed, there was a shooting in Jacksonville at a Madden uh, gaming tournament that was out that way. Um, one of the participants uh, came into the bar. He was participating in the in the tournament, and I don't know the full details, but he basically came in with a firearm and he shot two of his opponents uh, and killed them. And then he's also responsible for fatal for uh, hurting uh, other people that were involved in the in the tournament as well who are in the hospital right now. So there's been three victims all together, including the shooter. He did take his own life. Um, and it's just a real tragedy that we've heard over this week. And, you know, my hope is I don't have to come on to a microphone and talk to you guys about this like we do today. I mean, by this point we hear it all the time and, um, politically, everyone's on their own side about what the right thing is to do, and I, I don't want to touch on that today. But what I do believe is that in tragedies, the heroes are the ones who take positive action. And today, I want us to try to take positive action in our own way and be the friends in the corner for uh, people who are part of this Jacksonville tragedy. So um, looking around the internet here today, I was trying to find out what are some ways people are doing to help. And um, I was looking, the GLHF game bar, which is down there in Jacksonville. It's, I don't know if it was the bar where the tournament was taking place at or if it was in that, it's in that proximity at least. They have a GoFundMe page going on right now. Uh, for the victims of the tragedy down there in Jacksonville. And so I want to encourage you guys to be friends in someone's corner here in Jacksonville. I've got friends that live in Jacksonville, so it just hits home for me. But um, I want us to be friends in the corner for the people that have been hurt in the Jacksonville shooting. Um, and so this uh, gaming bar has started this GoFundMe page that I'm encouraging you guys to go and donate to. Whatever you got, $5. Some people are donating 500 I don't even want you sure if you feel led for that that's great um but do something do something today po- take positive action um the hashtag out there is hashtag gamers give back glhf um so please either look that up on twitter or we'll have the link to the gofundme page in our description um on the youtube page and we'll be tweeting and facebooking it out as well so um if you have some something you can give please do and hopefully you know thoughts and prayers up we'll get to experience less of these tragedies as they happen. But now we're going to get back to our original content here and talk to you guys about some of the stuff we're doing on this YTE. So as I mentioned earlier, um, these are the takes from the interviews we couldn't make into the final cut just for time's sake. And I'm, and I could listen to Otis talk for uh, three days if possible, but obviously you guys as listeners only had a short time period. So we're going to add the rest of that here in for you guys to listen to. So I encourage you guys just to hear these next couple of takes as we, uh, you get to hear what you didn't hear in the interviews with Max Godby from BB and shock talk, Adam banks from off the cuff and DJ Otis badass from primetime wrestling. So we're going to just transition into those. Each clips we will start with max. Then we'll go to Adam and then we'll go to Otis. Um, then we'll have some final thoughts at the end. Um, again, thank you guys again for listening to our podcast and we hope you enjoy this YT. Here we go. <laughs>
you all are rude. Every single person in here, including Dan, which, Dan, I didn't give you any credit at the very beginning. Dan, Dan the man, Polly, who's producing for us. So if I say we're going to record at 3 o'clock, and everyone says, yeah, 3 o'clock. And so I'm not even back to the house yet. And then all of a sudden I get a call from Matt Smith saying, hey, where are you? At 2.38. He's like, I'm not there yet. He goes, well, I'm here. I was like, well, why are you all right here? He goes, well, I was watching football and decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and come on over unannounced. It was halftime. Yeah. It was <laughs> halftime of the first <laughs> round of games. Is, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. So travel, then, I, travel time. then I have to hurry up even more. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I pull into the driveway, Dan Pauly is sitting there. And it's like, does no one know? Like, you're supposed to show up at 3, you know, 255 maybe. And then Dan shows up with this horrific Ohio State shirt on. No bucks. <laughs> recording started at three, Max. This wasn't a show up at three o'clock. It's a recording at three, and You're then we get to Lyle. 30, that's a thirty-minute buffer zone on each side. Thirty <laughs> minutes before, thirty minutes after. Then it, you got an hour window. Then so you Lyle can show up. Texas us at three o five. Yeah, I'm in for sales. I'll be there soon. So he shows. Just as a unit, we did not look good today. Well, see, I, I had the opposite view of Matt had. I thought we were all meeting here at three. We talk a little bit, plan things out. Maybe by three thirty. We'd hit the air, and it's 3.31. Our leadership needs to be a little bit better, Greg. That's all I can say. We talked about that. We, we've had those discussions in that time that we've spent together when yeah. we're waiting on Max. Yeah. Is that, is, is that it? Just the times that you're waiting on me? It's a lot of times, so <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. You all give horrific directions. First of all, I'm waiting for you oh, all week at the K-Club. We're back to week one. I'm waiting for you at the <laughs> K-Club earlier uh, yesterday, and I go, where are you all at? You oh, were at, nowhere near the K Club. Closer you to it than you were. You were on the left handed side of the green lot. The K Club is on the right handed side of the closer green Closer than you all were. You were closer to Nicholasville Road you than you were. You all got brought without Club. me. You left that part out. Matt spilt the beans on that one. What? Huh? <laughs> Um, before I started working at BCTC and doing podcasts for my life, I was I worked with special needs adults, and my um, um, my clients would love McDonald's. Like that's all we eat at, and one of my clients loved uh, buying Big Macs and stuff like that. Yeah, I try to. I actually went after a while of eating McDonald's because I was eating it too much to start packing my own food. And I told him one time because he loved getting Big Macs. I said, "All right." Um, Name redacted because I can't say his name here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you cannot get a Big Mac anymore. He's like, okay, I won't get a Big Mac anymore. So we go out to uh, lunch one day. He gets Mc- we go to McDonald's. He comes back. He's got two Big Macs with him. <laughs> I was like, what the hell happened? He's like, well, you said I couldn't get a Big Mac anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but he got multiple. He got multiple. He got two. <laughs> so <laughs> they're addictive. They're good. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably eat one just for the hell of it today. You're, you're going to get a Big Mac before uh, you get home tonight, are you? I probably will because mm-hmm. it is. I didn't realize it was the uh, 30th. I didn't either until the Herald Leader. You said, right? Uh, 50th, yes. It's the 50th year. It, so that's 1968. 1968. That's a long time, dude. Did you see, and I haven't seen it, it's still on my bucket list uh, movies to watch, the. Uh, McDonald's film that just came out in the last couple years or so. The Founder. The it's Founder. excellent. I wanted to watch it really. Watch that movie. It yes. really tells the story of Ray Kroc, mm-hmm. the creator of... Um, he just, he's not the creator of McDonald's. Wait, he buys it off of the he McDonald's buys, Brothers. He buys it off the McDonald's Brothers. He buys the restaurant and makes it into a franchise, mm-hmm. which the McDonald's Brothers tried to do, but they failed at it. Ray Kroc succeeded. So it's a it's an excellent movie. Okay. And he really screwed the McDonald brothers out of it. I think they ended up with a million dollars a piece <laughs> and Ray Kroc's worth billions. <laughs> so <laughs> But it's a good movie. It's on Netflix. Uh, who's the lead actor in that again? He's um um Batman. Um who is it? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yes. He is Batman. <laughs> he is Batman. <laughs> he, he's the true Batman. I, the, I love Christian Bale, but he is the true Batman. Is Adam West the true Batman, though? Uh, not my generation. I grew up as a kid remembering and watching Batman and Robin. Okay, so I think that the best Batman has to be Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he played Batman great. I think people give him a lot of crap because of his... You know, he likes to 
talk like this when he's Batman and people <laughs> make fun of him. But, you know, he's got to stay in character when he's Batman. He can't talk in his Christian Bale, Bruce Wayne voice. Right. You gotta keep it incognito. Yeah, I think it's Christian Bale and then Michael Keaton. Val Kilmer had the look and... Um, uh, and then George Clooney, uh, Kentucky Boy, was there for a little bit. But and he, he, he did okay. Not as bad as what everybody said he did, but he did okay. Mm-hmm. He did okay. And then Adam West was very cartoonish because right. it was the comic book cartoonish. I, and I think it's just my generation. I never related Adam West to Batman. I yeah. relate Adam West to Family Guy. <laughs> so, unfortunately, yeah. that's And when he it. died, he left his legacy with Family Guy. They even yeah, honored, he, honored him on Family right. Guy. Right. So, it's just like, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was good, though. So. so, what was it on Family Guy? They had him leaving with Lois's sister. Oh, uh, I haven't watched Family Guy in years. Yeah. So, it just kind of, yeah. When but, Adam West died, I think they wrote an episode right before he died. I think they had an episode where he left the city of Quahog. Mm. Like he just ran off with this new woman and Lois's sister, and they had lived happily ever after. <laughs> well, I guess that's the best way to do it. So, <laughs> um, this was not part of my hot topics, but I think that's a good one to kind of segue in here. What do you think of the Star Wars films? Yeah, they just came out the other day mentioning that instead of replacing Carrie Fisher's role in the film, they're going to just start y- using footage that they filmed pr- from the previous two films to um, add into there. I think that. They need to do that because yeah. they need to have her in there, mm-hmm. and it's a unique, creative way to still have someone in the in the movie. Um, and I, I think that's the right way to do it. Not that I, I, I'm kind of surprised, and this is just me, that they didn't kill off the character in the previous film. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's just, and I think that's kind of the nature of Hollywood. It's just hard to do that and say, all right, we're gonna like they did that with uh, Fast and Furious with. Um, Paul was Paul that Walker. Yeah. They didn't kill his character off. Obviously, they didn't do that with Carrie Fisher with the last film. Spoiler alert! So I'm part of, sorry about that. Um, that's just hard to do that. So I think that's the best way to do it. Just kind of honor the work that she put into the films and stuff like that. You want to, want me to be honest though? I am not a Star Wars fan. You know, I was going to ask that because I've never heard you talk about Star Wars. I'm on not podcast. like I'm not a Star Wars fan. I don't pretend to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know about who Carrie Fisher is, and I do know. Right. Uh, a little bit about it because it is so iconic. But right. as far as being a fan, no. Mm-hmm. No, I could care less. I don't watch the movies. I don't look forward to the movies. It's just not been... I've not seen Star Trek, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. I'm just not into that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm more of a Stephen King type Really? Person. So like it and all that stuff? <laughs> like what is it? It, it the nah. Lawrence Claiborne, Misery. All that uh, stuff. Carrie... Children of the Corn. Um, Shawshank. Shawshank. Shawshank Green is Mile. one of the best movies of all time. If anyone's never watched it, they need to. They need to. And The Green Mile is a great movie. Green Mile is good, too. It is. Tom Hanks is all good. Stephen King, he likes to premiere in a lot of his well, movies, too. You know that uh, Star Wars was just surpassed as the most uh, financially successful um, franchise of all time. You know who passed it? I th- Hold on. It, please don't tell me the Black Panther. No, 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 no. no, no, no. This, this isn't the movie scene. This is like... Um, uh, paraphernalia. This is like the entire franchise, the entire, um, the entire uh, brand altogether. Um, the most successful, most financially successful brand of all time, and you'll be surprised by it. Toy Story. No. <laughs> um, brand. This is a brand. Yeah. With movies. A name. Yeah, it's got movies. It's a video game you've played growing up. Grand Theft Auto. No. <laughs> Mario. No. A game. Resident Evil? No. I have no idea. Pokemon. Pokemon? Yeah, I saw... An... I never played Pokemon. Have that's another. Played Pokemon? That's another thing that I wasn't interested in. So, you know, I think it's right... I'm 30, so I think you, that... You never played Pokemon Go or anything? Nope. Mm. Nope. My generation was into stuff like WWF wrestling back yeah. in the day, man. Like, we were really, like, into... Uh, that's the difference between an 80s kid and a 90s kid. Yeah, the 90s kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were into Stone Cold and The Rock and and things like the Triple H, Shawn Michaels. Mm. That's what we were into. Monday Night Raw used to be the highlight of the oh, week. Gosh. I have the, do you have the WWE network? What no, nah, I'm I, I <laughs> It's worth every penny. I'm working on it. I I I uh, 
I find other means to find my wrestling content, unfortunately. But, um, it's but, worth every penny. I mean, but, I look at wrestling on YouTube too. Yeah, um, but I, I'm I was a wrestling fan. I never, I didn't start watching when I was um, in the WWF. It was WWF. I started watching 2004, so I missed the entire Attitude Era. Oh yeah, Stone you Cold did. was retired. John Cena was coming up. So John Cena is what I grew up with. John Cena, Batista, all that, uh, all those people. Okay. Um, and I still watch it now, which is, you know, it's not the same thing. No, it's and, not. And I, and I watch some stuff that's not WWE, New Japan, and all that stuff. It's but, funny, um, you started watching in 04, and I stopped. That's when in I stopped. 04, because it wasn't that good. No, <laughs> I I, I, and I told someone, like, a normal wrestling fan, like, and I, I went back and watched some of this stuff. I was like, well, if I, would, if I was a fan and I was finished in 04, I said, that's the perfect place to stop because that's when, like, wrestling got really weird yeah. at that point. <laughs> it's like, the Attitude Era was so good, though. But if you get the network, you can go back and look at how good it was. It, I've, I've watched some old Stone Cold matches. Some i watched the Hulk Hogan Rock WrestleMania match, which I thought was just crazy how lit the fan base was. And yeah, like how that. everybody was so into Hulk Hogan yeah. being there. I'll, I'll tell you how big in wrestling it was and um, for my... Uh, podcast base. A lot of people don't know I'm a wrestling fan. I had um, an Undertaker poster in my room growing up. It was a height chart. Yeah. And so I, that's how I gauged like how much I grew. It was based off. It was like a picture of the Undertaker, and you measured yourself against the Undertaker. Okay. It was amazing. Yeah. And I dressed up as the Undertaker for one uh, Halloween. Too. That's great. Yeah. Dude, that's great. I always wanted to dress up as a wrestler. <laughs> But I want it to be Stone Cold because he was just my favorite hands down. Yeah, Stone and Cold, still yeah. still to this day, like if I could choose one person in this entire world to meet, it would be Stone Cold. Really? Yeah, I would like to sit down and have a beer with Stone Cold. You ever listen to his podcast at all? I do. I do listen to his mm-hmm. podcast. Uh, I do like wrestling podcasts. I like his and I like Bruce Pritchard's. Bruce Pritchard, yeah. Uh, something to wrestle with. But uh, Stone Cold, I used to have posters of him, The Rock, all that good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. But The Undertaker... He's a legend. Top five greatest of all time. Oh, yeah. Well, who is your top five? I, I kind of want to hear this. My top five, okay. Off the cuff, no pun intended, uh-huh. I will say it. Stone Cold, The Rock, Triple H, Hulk Hogan. Shawn Michaels has got to be in there. Hulk Hogan and number five. You know what? It probably is going to be Mick Foley. Mick Foley? I, I can get behind Mick Foley. Yeah. Mine Shawn are, Michaels is in the top ten. My Shawn Michaels is one of the top ones. My brother's favorite wrestler of all time was Shawn Michaels. You got him when he started getting wrestling because my brother got me into wrestling. Um, he's not into it anymore because he's married and has a dog and a life and stuff. And I'm still, you know, getting there. <laughs> um, but uh, when I started watching wrestling, he was uh, Shawn Michaels was a dude. So Shawn Michaels, Eddie, Eddie Guerrero, yeah, uh, Undertaker. Um, I, I watched the Andre the doc, uh, Andre the Giant documentary a while back. I thought he was one of the best ones. Yeah. Um, and I know this is maybe a little more controversial. I to talk about Chris Benoit was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, and uh, it's hard to say that I used to have Chris Benoit T-shirts and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, he was a lot of people's favorite wrestler. Yeah, it's like, but mm, Chris Benoit was really one of my favorites, and uh, probably Jericho. He's still wrestling now. It's like it's ridiculous. Yeah. He's 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 got a championship in Japan. That's like he's he's doing all right. And he's himself. got a band too, don't he? Yeah, he's Fozzy. Fozzy. Fozzy, which has got some good music. I'm not gonna. Lie. I've listened to some of it. So. Yeah, he's got a podcast. He's a busy guy. Yeah, he's very talented. Yeah, so I, I like I like a lot of interesting different wrestling stuff. So, but it's yeah. fun. So you you never had Stone Cold in there? So I didn't I didn't watch Stone Cold in yeah. his prime and stuff like. That. I was past Stone Cold. Like I said, I I started right when John Cena got popular, is right when he did the rapping gimmick and all that stuff. But Kurt, you said Andre the Giant, which you didn't watch, but dude, Stone Cold was the goat. Mm. He was the best ever. Like his feud with Vince McMahon I'm telling you, was something crazy. It was. It was. It's what catapulted wrestling. Mm. It's what made wrestling what it is. We've got a huge show coming up here soon. It's called <laughs> All In. Ten thousand seats sold out. Um, yeah, fully funded by. Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. Right. So, what do you what do you think of something like that, where an independent show is able to do that, put ten thousand butts in the seats? Great. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Right now, and I don't want to come across saying I, I'm not dogging 
any promotions mm-hmm. whatsoever. And, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm dogging WWE. Here's my point. It is a great time to be a wrestling fan because there is so much wrestling out there and what Cody Rhodes is doing with all in mm-hmm. and, and I mean, and what the young bucks have done. No, I'm not a fan of the young bucks, mm. but Hey, I'm gonna give it to you guys. Awesome. What you have able to pull off all because somebody said that an independent promotion cannot fill 10,000 seats. That's what it started from. And now look what's happened. <laughs> my only beef with all in right now is that they're, uh, in their, in their promos, they sampled a Tom Petty song. They sampled Mary Jane's Last Dance and turned it into a little rap gimmick. <laughs> and I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. And then um, go for it. I've got a friend of mine. She's going. I'm jealous. <laughs> I want to go. I love Chicago, too. And, I mean, man, you're talking about some hardcore wrestling fans up there. Oh, yeah. They are hardcore about it. No doubt in my mind, All In will be a huge success. I wouldn't be surprised if you and I are sitting here one year ago or – one year from now, mm-hmm. talking about all in number two. That would be exciting. So it would be. It uh, would be. And, and, and for independent promotions like PTW, this has got to be great for them because it gets more people interested in wrestling. Right. <laughs> um, it, it opens doors. Mm-hmm. It opens doors. We, you know, we we have a home for you. If you're if we if you're good and we think you're good, we have a home for you. Mm-hmm. If you want to get into wrestling. You know, all these different promotions. There, There is something out there for everybody if you're a fan of wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, if um, if you're if you're a fan of just the independent scene, all in's where it's at. Yeah. You know, if you're just a fan of local, regional wrestling, primetime wrestling, it's where it's at. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, what a great time to be alive and be a wrestling fan mm-hmm. right now. So, are you going to all in? <laughs> I won't be. I'll be uh, sitting streaming it on my computer. I've already got my setup. I'm going to uh, stream all in on my computer, and uh-huh. it's the same day as college football starts, so I'm going to watch Alabama crush Louisville at the same time. Good for you. It's a good combo right Go there. Go Crimson Tide. <laughs> uh, roll Tide. <laughs> roll Tide. Um, you know what? I, I didn't. This is completely off subject, but sitting here talking about wrestling. Last mm-hmm. couple of years, what I've done for WrestleMania, I went out and bought a projector. So, I tailgate. WrestleMania. Really? And I've got a projector with uh, my laptop hooked up, and I show it on my garage door and get the grill out and get a couple coolers full of beer. And I invite friends over and I say, hey, bring your chairs. We'll sit out on the driveway and watch it. Oh, my God. And literally, we have it up on my garage. It's huge. <laughs> and I've had probably about 30 people in my driveway watching WrestleMania. That's awesome. I mean, it, it is an absolute blast. Now, there's only one problem with that. When are uh, WWE pay per views? When are WWE? Yeah. <laughs> Sunday nights. What happens on Sunday nights in Paris, Kentucky? PTW. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Conflict of interest. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Can I get the invite to the next WrestleMania party? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> as soon as I uh, clear off the PTW schedule somehow, <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, definitely invite you over and we'll watch that watch wrestling. Awesome. There. Have some beers. So. Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> so, um, all in again, and, and you know, uh, in conjunction with all in is exactly what we're doing now. This Starcast thing that they got going on, yeah. this whole podcasting wrestling right. convention. That's going to happen up there. I mean, come on. Who would have ever thought? And I may be way off base on this, but right now, the time that we live in, the biggest help to independent wrestling has been podcasting. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, do you, do you listen to a lot I, of wrestling podcasts? Talk is Jericho, something to wrestle with. That, yeah. Honestly, I kind of base my show off Talk is Jericho. Uh huh. So, yeah, I would listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts. I mean, yeah. you know, three or four years ago, who would have known who the hell Conrad Thompson was? <laughs> now look at him, you know. I mean, Bruce Pritchard, after Brother Love, <laughs> would have been, you know, to the casual wrestling fan an afterthought. Now, every day, excuse me, my friends and I, we're quoting Bruce Pritchard. And Brother Love, and, you know, I, I, I love his impressions, mm. you know, and, and they're fantastic. Jerry Jarrett, when you, you know about the chicken salad? No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> but, I mean, 
there's just there's so many podcasts and there's so many ways to cover independent mm-hmm. wrestling and there's so many ways to get the word out and get the PR out about your promotion. You'd be stupid not to do, not take advantage of the internet, not take advantage of what's here in front of you to get that word out about your promotion or even get yourself booked. If you're a wrestler, get yourself booked mm-hmm. on a show. Take advantage of all this, all the social media that's out there. Right. So this Starcast thing, I mean, I think it's fantastic. I think I really it's awesome do too. I, I love seeing just seeing the lineup they have for it and stuff. Hopefully, maybe this time next year we'll be doing this at Starcast for All In too. Hey, I'm <laughs> in. I, listen, I, I want that phone call. I'll wait on that phone call from you. You take care of that. You know, I actually um, they were running a deal on Twitter where if you retweet this, we'll give you a couple free tickets. <laughs> I did it. I haven't heard back from them. But, <laughs> and, and again, what a great what a great city to hold it in, Chicago, oh, yeah. Illinois. Well, since it is in Chicago, one last thing about All In. CM Punk, do you think he'll be there? I know he keeps saying, no, nah, he's not into it, but. I, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, if he was there, if he shows up, it's just the icing on the cake. Yeah. It is. And for the fans that are expecting him there, that want him there, I hope it happens for you. Mm-hmm. I hope it does right now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Hard to tell, mm-hmm. but I but I'll be wa- we'll be watching here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, Otis, just thank you so much for this interview, and just it, thank you so much for your time. Anything else we want to talk about about wrestling? <laughs> anything else? Who, who's your favorite current day wrestler right now? Who, who's who's someone you en- really enjoy watching? Legendary Larry D. <laughs> um, checks in the mail. <laughs> oh man, I, I, I got root for your paycheck, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, WWE. Bobby Roode is yeah. probably right now my favorite. Um, and, and, you know, you sit there and say what you want to about, oh, he's stolen Ric Flair's robe and all this <laughs> and everything. But you know what? If I was to pick anybody that could model their career after Ric Flair, now you got to think Ric Flair's Ric Flair. Right. It's hard to reproduce the charismatic nature boy Ric Flair. Um, but, man, I just love, I'm just a fan of Bobby Roode and his mm-hmm. work. In the ring, I really am. I'll tell you this: who I became a fan of after I met him was Jinder Mahal. Really? Yeah, I was not a Jinder Mahal fan until I met him in November, and um, I got to talk him. I got to talk to him um, right down the road here at WKQ at the WQ Studios. Uh, hey, you you know you see this big mean dude on there. And there's still a little when you when you meet him outside the ring, there's still a little bit of this guy's bigger than me. This guy could snap on me <laughs> at any moment, but I mean he's very, very I I just say this, very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, I'm not gonna say he's nice, not gonna say he was mean, but he was just cool. Cool. I mean, so it, it, I, I kind of became a fan of his mm-hmm. all of a sudden. Um you know, right right now, those two. Um I'll always be a fan of Paul Heyman. I know we're not talking wrestling, and that's something I love to talk about too: is wrestling announcers, mm-hmm. managers, valets, escorts, mm-hmm. advocates. <laughs> Always be a fan of Paul Heyman. I just think he's so good on the microphone, so good. I, no, I'm not that big of a fan of Brock Lesnar, but I am a fan of Paul Heyman. I mean, that's the best part of the premise of Brock Lesnar is listening to Paul Heyman. Yeah, talk. it is. <laughs> it like, is, and I mean, you know, Paul E. Dangerously, yeah. you know, and uh, man. <laughs> Have you ever seen some old video, of Paul Paul Heyman? I've seen I've seen some very old ECW clips. Uh, you, you, well, there there was a time where he was in WCW, mm. uh, and literally right after right after the Crockett's had merged with uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, and, and it became WCW. There's some old footage of Paul Heyman mm. out there that you and then you see you see the Paul Heyman that we know of today. Mm-hmm. It's just funny. It's absolutely hilarious. So, um, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Is no, it no. anybody else that you uh, <laughs> enjoy? Um, I'm trying to think of some guy. I love AJ Styles. I've been I've been watching what? AJ since TNA days. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I I don't want to say I'm a big fan, mm-hmm. but I am a fan of his. I, yeah. I I I thought it was a home run when WWE got him in. And it's funny, ten you know, ten years ago, if you would have said AJ, we're having AJ versus Samoa Joe for the WWE title right. on our WWE pay per view, right? And everyone would have laughed. Yeah, and it's like, but now it's one of the main events, and I'm like, I'm like, 
that the inner teenager high schooler means like freaking out. Is it? <laughs> I was like, I'm like the pimply teenager. It's like, it's like, it's not TNA. It's like, yeah. It's like, um, <laughs> and you know, and, and part of me is on the edge of my seat waiting for the undertaker to come back. Yeah. You know what, whatever may happen, whatever decisions that he is making about him going off into the sunset. I don't mm-hmm. know. Is there that glimmer of a hope that he may come back for one mm-hmm. more? You know, yeah. I mean, last time we saw him, he kind of left it wide open. Yeah. You know, so, mm-hmm. um, it's female wrestling. Yeah. I, I love Natalia. Mm-hmm. I think she's great. I really do. Um, I like Charlotte Flair. Now I, I said something about, um, Bailey. I, I told a friend of mine, we, we, we were actually at WWE uh, a few weeks ago at Rupp Arena. And I said, when the hell did women's wrestling become bright colors and I'm a hugger? <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't, and it's just not my, it's just not my style. It's not, it's not a gimmick for me that mm. appeals to me as far as women wrestling. What appeals to me is going back to the old mid South days and there's dark journey with that loaded down Gucci bag and she puts it up Missy Hyatt's uh, head in the uh, mid South. I, I think it was actually in Memphis at the mid South Coliseum. You know, I mean, some of them women back then were nasty, just nasty. And that's one of the things. But, I mean, this hugger stuff, come on. <laughs> it's not for me, dude. Yeah. Not for me at all. It's different. What about Ronda Rousey? What do you think of her um, transition into wrestling right now? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I don't know. She was she was the name they needed at the right time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I don't know if. And I think the I think the women's division is doing great things. Mm. I really do. Um, I'm glad they got rid of the diva title. Yeah, you know, because I don't want to equate women's wrestling as divas. Divas is for you know that Mariah Carey bull crap and all that. You know, if they didn't want to think of that themselves that way, music, uh, girls in pop culture like that. But wrestler, uh, women wrestling, I want to think of them as athletes. Mm. You know, I want to think of them as a champion. And I just never thought that the diva title held that, you know, and, and you know, good for them. I think they're doing wonderful things. Yeah. I do. And I think, I think if you are not watching what some of these women are doing in WWE, you're missing out. Yeah. It's completely different from when I first got into wrestling. Cause yeah. in 2004, it was like, you know, the, the swimsuit models and stuff. And now these are like right. real athletes out there. And then if you go back to the late nineties and what it was, I mean, yeah. it was, it was smut. Yeah. It was smut and it appealed to me in college. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean there was there was something about seeing Trish Stratus which was just like whoa. <laughs> you know, uh Stacy um, Keebler. Oh. <laughs> but I'm telling you what legs that would go on for days. Um uh, uh Deborah McMichaels. Um you know, and, and but then you had great athletic women in the late nineties like Lita, mm-hmm. who was unbelievable in the ring. So it's interesting to see the progression of women in WWE and, you know, they really started coming to the forefront in the late nineties because of the touchy material that they were doing Mm -hmm. as to now the world, they're really pushing women athletes. And I feel that a lot of that's got to be just the culture we're in now. 2018 and yeah. 1998, yeah, two different, completely different oh, years. Oh, totally, yeah. totally different. I mean, I don't know if the Attitude Era would survive right now. I really don't know that. Now, it did for a little bit uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s, and it was a blast. <laughs> I loved it. I loved the Monday Night Wars. But right now, given the uh, political culture, political climate of things mm-hmm. i don't know if the attitude era would survive right now mm-hmm. well and, and now the wwe for those who are interested in learning more about women's wrestling and where it's come now they're actually going to have their own pay-per-view yeah and <laughs> yeah that, I, I completely missed that i mean, yeah. how about that stephanie mcmahon making that announcement yeah. evolution a couple weeks ago so. you know good for them mm-hmm. good for them and he, here's the when you talk about women's wrestling and what they're doing uh in the wwe there's one word that comes to mind, empowerment. Mm-hmm. That's what they're doing. And, and, and they're showing they're showing these kids, hey, you know, we, you can do this, especially girls. 
you know, you can do this. We it goes back to what I said. We got a home for you. You got to work your ass off. But you know what? Hey, do it. We'll see great things happen from you. You know, I, I think it's great what they're doing. I actually, I'm switching gears back to PTW for a minute. Has PTW had any women's wrestlers come through? Yeah, we've had. Um, let's just uh, let me let me get this straight. She's got like the longest title in the world. <laughs> The third generation sensation, which I love, Luscious Lexi Green, uh, her uh, big mama comes in every once in a while and wrestles. So, um, and that's one thing we are working on in PTW is trying to develop a women's division. Mm. Um, you know, you asked me, how do I see PTW, what the goals are for it? Um, I, in my apologies, I left that out, but <laughs> creating a women's division. I think it can only appeal to our fan base mm. even more. All right. And thank you again to Max Gobby, Adam Banks, and DJ Otis Badass for their wonderful interviews this past month and for this extra content they were able to give us to do our first YTE exclusive. Um, again, I want to tell you guys to follow them on Twitter. You can follow Max at oh my god be 64 adam at adam banks 88 and dj otis badass at dj otis badass and be sure to follow our show on facebook twitter and instagram at fitc podcast also be sure to email the show at friends in the corner at gmail.com that's friends in the corner all together lowercase at gmail.com also one more final plug be sure to donate to the jacksonville uh, shooting relief fund here by the glhf bar uh, down there in Jacksonville. Uh, the link is in the description again, so be sure to donate to that GoFundMe page. Uh, give Gamers Give Back is the hashtag there. Gamers Give Back GLHF, so be sure to donate. And thank you guys again for listening to our first YTE exclusive. We'll be back next week with a full interview on all five of our listening platforms. Be sure to check it out then. That's a wrap.